Hello and welcome. Today I'm gonna show you a very easy and quick way on how to make dramatic black and white images and turn something like this into something like this in just about 10 minutes. So let's get started. First thing I'm gonna do is turn this color into black and white and then I'm right away gonna straighten the horizon with that angle tool. Just roughly drag it along the horizon press enter so now we have already a straight image. Then the next thing I'm gonna do is bring down the highlights all the way so we have a lot of detail in the clouds and in the sky. Then I'm gonna bring up the shadows all the way even though it looks kinda washed out right now I'm gonna fix that in a second. First of all I'm gonna bring up the whites. Hold down the ALT key to see wherever any highlights are clipped. Actually I'm gonna bring them down in this case because I don't want any clipped highlights. Yeah, that works pretty well. Then I'm gonna bring down the blacks so we have a very contrasty and dramatic looking image right away. Alright, that looks very good. Here's blacks at zero, here's black down all the way. Really looks amazing already. Then to contrast, I don't think I'm gonna change too much to global contrast right now. Maybe just add a little bit of contrast. Then down to clarity, I'm not gonna change too much to clarity either. Maybe a bit of plus, yeah, like plus 15 works pretty well. Then overall exposure, I think I'm gonna bring down the overall exposure a bit, just so we have even more dramatic lighting. Yeah, that looks pretty well. Then to the tone curve, I'm gonna bring up the highlights here, as I always do in the tone curve module. Something like that. Other than the highlight slider up here, this will just affect the very highlights of the picture, rather than all of the bright parts, like up here. So here's highlights at zero on the tonal curve, and here's at around 75. Really adds a lot of dynamic. Then lights gonna play around with the lights. I think I'm going to bring them down in this case. Something like that works pretty well. Then the darks, maybe bringing it down a bit as well. Something like that, not too much. And then to the shadows, shadows are just like highlights right here. They just affect the very dark parts of the image. So you can play around with those. I think I'm gonna leave them at zero actually. Then to the HSL tool, we're not gonna do anything here because it's a black and white image so there's no individual colors we can adjust. Split toning, you could add some color into the highlights or shadows, however I don't really think I wanna do that here. It can work sometimes to bring some oranges into the highlights, but for this case I really don't think it would work well at all. Then to the detail tool, gonna zoom in one to one and increase the sharpening if it's needed and I think it's needed here. Something like that. Make sure you don't over sharpen the image otherwise you get a look like this and it looks just grainy and ugly. So I think I'm gonna stick around 60 here. Gonna zoom out again, masking to the right, hold down the ALT key everything that's white is going to be sharpened and everything that's black is not going to be sharpened. So you want to make sure you don't select any sky or water because that would just increase ugly noise. I think around 87 masking works pretty well here. Then noise reduction, you could add noise reduction and there's definitely a little bit of noise here because we've raised the shadows so much. However, I don't mind noise nearly as much in black and white images as I do in color images and in some cases it can even add a bit of kind of style if you will. So I rather keep it like that rather than bringing up the noise reduction and making it a bit more plasticky looking and get rid of some detail. So I'm gonna leave that at zero. Color noise reduction, not gonna change anything there because there's no color noise we can visibly see in black and white down to lens corrections. I'm gonna enable profile corrections. Make sure you choose your lens here, in my case the Canon 18 to 55 kit lens, and it will get rid of all of the distortion. Here's without lens corrections, and here's with. 
It will also get rid of all of the vignetting, however I really like vignetting so I'm gonna set that one to zero here. Then down to effects, I'm definitely gonna add some vignetting here, probably quite a bit actually, but first I think I'm gonna set the midpoint more towards the center. So we have even more vignetting, let me see here. I think that works pretty well, it really gives it a very dark and dramatic mood. Then down here at the camera calibration, you can play around with the profile, so I'm gonna do that right now. It will change some of the highlights and then some of the dark parts, but it's not a huge deal in black and white, so I think I'm just gonna stick with Adobe Standard. And then down here to the color sliders, these even will have an impact in your black and white image, but not nearly as much as in a color image, so if you wanna play around with these, you can. If you don't, you can save yourself a little bit of time. Just for demonstration purposes, I'm gonna play around with these sliders and jump right back when I'm done. Alright, so I'm back after messing around with these color sliders, here's without and here's with, really not a big difference at all, so again, you can save yourself a little bit of time and just don't mess with these sliders at all. Now we're done with the global adjustments, so now I'm gonna do some local adjustments. First thing I'm gonna do is grab an adjustment brush, reset everything for now and increase the exposure a bit as well as clarity. Make sure the feather is to 100 and then just kind of paint over the parts I want a bit brighter in the image. I think that works pretty good. Now I'm gonna do some more dodge and burning with the radial filter. I really like the radial filter. Just be sure to invert the mask and that the feather is at 100. Then I'm gonna increase the exposure again. I think I'm gonna leave clarity at zero and just kinda make some filters and drag them over the railroad right here. Duplicate this one, maybe make it a bit smaller over there, angle it a bit differently, something like that, maybe duplicate it again, drag it over there, make it a bit smaller, something like that. Alright, so I'm actually done with this photo, so let's see where we started with the raw file. This is the raw file, not very interesting, kind of flat, not very dramatic, the sky is overexposed. And here's what we've made in about 10 minutes, I'd say. Let's see here. Really a totally different mood, very dramatic. I know this video was very fast paced, so if you have any questions, just leave them in the comment section down below. I'm gonna try to reply to all of them. And please subscribe if you would like to see more videos just like this, other editing stuff, Lightroom tutorials, and also if you think your friends could find this video interesting or could learn something off of it, Give me a share on Facebook or Twitter, I appreciate that one a lot. Thank you so much for watching, I wish you an amazing week, take care.